And last year, Peggy and I and our daughter Kitty were in the West Highlands of Scotland and decided to climb some hills. And they streaked ahead of me and I saw them getting smaller and smaller. And I felt smaller and smaller. And about halfway up, I just gave up. I sat down in that great tumbled mass of rock in that great, beautiful desolation and thought, well, this is the end. I have reached the end of the road. I really felt very sorry for myself. Uh, and I brooded about it for the next three or four days and wrote a song. The song is called The Joy of Living. Farewell, you northern hills, you mountains all goodbye. Moorland and stony ridges, crags and peaks, goodbye. Let a fat farewell, cold bake scoffell, cloud bearing sylvan, sun warmed rock and the cold of bleak lows, frozen sea, the snow and the wind and the rain of hills and mountains. Days in the sun and the tempered wind and the air like wine. And you drink and you drink till you're drunk on the joy of living. Ewan McColl was a working-class Renaissance man, actor, songwriter, political activist, playwright, folklorist, and one of the finest ever interpreters of the traditional ballad. He died a year ago at the age of 74. With Theatre Workshop, which he founded with Joan Littlewood, he had a profound effect on 20th century British drama, and later, he and Peggy Seeger were to become the leaders of the folk revival an international movement which has influenced singer-songwriters from Bob Dylan to Tracy Chapman. Their relationship lasted 30 years to his death. McColl devoted his life and work to the celebration of the achievements of his class. His father was an iron molder, his mother a domestic, both working-class Scots steeped in the ballads and stories of the Celtic tradition. From them, McColl learnt much of his huge repertoire of songs. Yeah. Was it the windy wall? Was it the windy wall? A bonny bloody wee cuddly hefty tack could marry a wall. Waddly tack a tea, waddly tack a tea. The back of the hell to kiss the fell the monster land. Waddly tack a tea, waddly tack a tea. The back of the hell to kiss the fell the monster land. Waddly tack a tea, waddly tack a tea. The back of the hell to kiss the fell the monster land. Waddly tack a tea, waddly tack a tea. The back of the hell to kiss the fell the monster land. Waddly tack a tea, waddly tack a tea. We've all been taught that we must be original at all times, but in order to be original, you have to have something to work with. And in order to have something to work with as a singer or a musician, you have to acquire it from somewhere, and it doesn't all come from the inside, mostly comes from the outside. Beethoven was about, according to musicologists, was about 10% original, and he was a very original man. So there's the young singer who starts out by saying, oh, I must get my own style before he's even learned how to sing more than five songs. He's on the wrong track. And that, but that's not the track that Ewan and the great singers like Woody Guthrie have ever taken. They've learned, they've worked terribly hard to get down exactly what the singer 
who, who sang the song they liked did to the song, the exact style. So then they could have that whole thing to work with. All in his lamentations that man was made to moan. There's no such thing as pleasure from the cradle to the end. But in his meditations, he surely had forgot the pleasure man enjoyed. Ironically, McCull learned these songs not in Scotland, but in industrial Salford, where his parents had moved in their search for work. McCall is frequently reported to have come from Octorada, his mother's hometown. In fact, he was born in a small terraced house on Coburg Street, in an area of Salford known as Lower Broughton. He was christened Jimmy Miller, and grew up among a proud expatriate Scots community. He later took the name Ewan McCall, from a minor 19th century Scots poet. I'm Scotch and you Scotch. Scotch we aim and must be. And then the Disney light gets Scotch we can gang to the deal for me. A few weeks before we were due to start filming, McCall went into hospital for an operation on his heart. He didn't recover. Before he left, he sent us a sound cassette to help us with our research, in which he talks about the film and describes the Salford of his youth. Tim. This tape is in answer to your letter of the 12th of this month. I had intended to sit down and write uh, a reply, but I'm off to the hospital in the morning to have my operation, and I'm really strapped for time. Anyway, I'll try to answer some of the points you raise. Apropos of places, the places that stick most vividly in my memory, uh, well, one of them is Cock Robin Bridge. That is the name that we gave to it as kids. And there was the canal, the part of the canal entered from Law Broughton. It was a kind of evil smelling area. And indeed, most of the effluence given off from the rubber works kind of made this, this uh, portion of the Irwell not unlike the sticks. Down in Broughton runs the Irwell, you can smell it any time. Oh, it smells just like a kazi, worse than working down a mine. Uh, Spike Island was another place. That was a cinder croft or a cinder a recreation ground, um, bordered on the one side by houses and on one edge by the river itself. And its larger end, uh, debouching onto uh, Frederick Road. We're boys of Unwin Square, ride on the tram without any fan. Read em! We're the boys of Anki Park, got cat's eyes can see in the dark. Read em! There was the Liverpool Street Croft and Gasworks, the gasworks of, um, what's it called? Uh, dirty Old Town. Very spectacular in a dreary kind of way. Um, there was also Grecian Street School, which was further away, about a mile and a half away, and that was the school I went to. Uh, Sherburn Street, where I used to walk along every morning for about a year and a half on the way to the, to the wireworks, where I worked for a period, 